The title of this video won't be 100% accurate. In fact, it'd be a miracle if it was. And that's because the way YouTube allows you to update titles doesn't happen in real time. It'll be a few minutes between every single update. But it'll be very close. Either way, there's no way for you to tell if it's accurate because you can't really see the number of dislikes. Almost all the users on YouTube now have lost the ability to see dislikes. Only the creators of the videos can now see how many dislikes a video has. We're going to talk about why this only hurts YouTube viewers. But first, I'm going to get a haircut from a place rated five stars by Mandy nine days ago who came in and said, this place does a great job cutting hair. I rarely go anywhere else. They also cut my daughter's hair and she looked really good for picture day. Always happy. We will continue to come back. Well, let's get a haircut. What I didn't tell you about that barber shop is that it's the worst rated barber in all of Los Angeles. Now, the point of this is not to trash on any of the people who cut hair inside because honestly, they didn't do that bad. It was like a $20 cut and I got a $20 cut's worth. It's not the worst haircut I've ever gotten and in a pinch, I would come back. It's to show you that if you only look at positive feedback, you don't get the full picture. I told you one five-star review and there were a few others, but there were 58 one-star reviews at this place. That paints a picture. More information always helps a user make a more informed decision. Negative feedback is only used in juxtaposition to the positive feedback. If you only see negative feedback or you only see positive feedback, you won't have the full picture. People have already said dozens of examples of videos where dislikes would be a good thing. Tutorials that are actually fake and the dislike bar will let you know that immediately. The fact still remains that most people who watch YouTube, you right now, don't usually like videos or dislike videos. You don't usually comment either. You don't even subscribe half the time, even though creators beg you in the cringiest ways possible. You just go on, you click a video, you'll look at the like to dislike bar and you'll decide if you want to watch that. And even a few seconds in, you might scroll down to the comments. You might be in the comment section right now trying to read what other people thought about the video to see if this is actually worth your time. What are people saying about this? I know I do it all the time when I'm browsing through TikTok. I'll immediately open up the comment section and if there's no positive comments, then I might just skip that video. I'm not gonna sit through the two and a half segment or scrub through it to see if it's really worth sticking around to the ending. More information only helps users make more informed choices. Removing dislikes is just removing information. Only seeing positive information can lead you to going to the worst barbershop in Los Angeles. Imagine finding restaurants, but Yelp only shows you the five-star reviews. It'd be a whole lot harder to find a great spot for a nice date night. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got for you. Hopefully this video pushes the discourse a little more and maybe YouTube, maybe, will reconsider adding dislikes again. And if you somehow are one of the lucky few who still have dislikes enabled, let me know how accurate it was in the comments. I know it's not gonna be perfect, but I hope this experiment was somewhat successful. By the way, before the video ends, I have to give a huge thank you to Tom Scott who inspired this video with, with his video. How many views does this video have? Thank you very much, Tom, and um, thanks for watching the video, guys. It doesn't look that bad, right? Like, you know, it's, it looks fine, it looks good. It looks good, it looks, it looks okay.